Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I'm Dr. Manpreet Aroda from Central University of Himachal Pradesh, Dharamshala. Today, we are going to discuss about a module, Role of IMF in World Monetary System, under the paper International Business Operations. The learning outcome of this module will be, after completing this module, you will be able to understand and know about the creation of IMF, working and the functions of IMF, role of IMF in world monetary system. The IMF, famously known as the Fund, was propounded and conceived at the United Nations Conference in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, United States in July 1944. It was created in 1945 by 44 countries. The present membership has gone up to 188 countries and the organization is working in the direction of promoting and fostering global monetary cooperation, create and secure financial stability, facilitate and support international trade, promote and create an environment of high employment opportunities, achieving sustainable economic growth. One of the major objectives currently is to reduce poverty around the world. Headquartered at Washington DC, the IMF has 24 directors at its executive board who represent a single country or a group of countries. Presently, it has a staff of approximately 2600 people who represent around 147 countries. The total quota stands at US dollar 327 billion and the additional pledged or committed resources stand at US dollar 885 billion. According to the official data of IMF and the amount outstanding as on March 2015, Portugal, Greece, Ireland, Ukraine are the biggest borrowers of IMF. As per the original aims of IMF, it was founded around more than 60 years ago, nearly towards the end of the World War II. The founders or the promoters, they wanted to create such a framework to foster economic cooperation among the countries where there is not a repetition of disastrous economic policies which created and were the source of Great Depression of 1930s, followed by a global conflict. But the times have changed and the world has changed drastically too. At the time of the establishment and now also the major aim of IMF was to provide and to maintain financial stability globally. IMF has continued to offer a forum or a platform for promoting cooperation on international monetary problems and issues, assist the expansion of international trade, thereby inducing and promoting job creation, foster economic growth and take necessary steps for poverty reduction. It also helps to endorse, promote exchange rate stability and an open system of international payments and create a lending system to provide the countries foreign exchange when needed on a temporary basis under adequate safeguards to help them address balance of payment problems. The International Monetary Fund works like a central bank for the world's all member countries central banks. Headquartered in Washington DC, it cooperates closely with the World Bank. The IMF has a board of governors consisting of one representative from each member nation. The major goals of the IMF are to promote, enhance, encourage world trade, stabilize exchange rates and help the member nations to correct the balance of payments problems in an orderly fashion. A significant aspect of this is to prevent a situation in which a nation 
has to devalue its currency just to encourage its exports. Devaluation for such a situation is often regarded as unfairly competitive if issues like poor fiscal and monetary policies are not addressed, solved or met by the nation wisely and properly. The member nations of IMF have to keep up funds in the form of a currency reserve units called as Special Drawing Rights, SDRs, on deposit with IMF. A new system of currency as a hybrid asset was created by IMF in 1969. It was named as Special Drawing Rights, that is SDRs. For a period of 1974 to 1980, the value of SDRs was based on the currencies of 16 leading trading nations. Since 1980, it was based on the currencies of the five largest exporting nations. From 1990 to 2000, these were the United States, Japan, Great Britain, Germany and France. The value of SDRs is now reassigned every five years. These SDRs are held in the account of IMF nations in proportion to their contribution to the fund. All the nations who participate in this agree to accept SDRs in exchange for reserve currencies. They use in SDRs in settling their international accounts. All IMF accounting is done in SDRs. And commercial banks also accept SDR denominated deposits. The member nations can exchange SDRs for maintaining their operations, exchanging their SDRs for other related assets with one another in case of a balance of payment situation. In addition to maintaining the system of SDRs and promoting international liquidity, the IMF monitors worldwide economic developments and provides policy advice, loans and technical assistance in certain situations to the member countries. Taking care of the world economy, IMF amended its constitution formally to revise its role in the world economy. Its role is now more enlarged and its overall mission lies on the promotion of international stability and growth. Role of IMF in International Monetary Fund The main aim or the primary purpose of IMF is to make certain the stability in the international monetary system which is the system of exchange rates and international payments through which countries make transactions with each another. The mandate of IMF states that it has to take care of all the macroeconomic factors and financial issues that affect or have a bearing on the global stability. Ensuring global stability implies that any type of economic and financial crisis are avoided. Inflation is under control. It also means that large swings of the economic activities and the high or excessive volatility in the foreign exchange market or financial market of a country do not hamper the growth of the economy and it remains stable. If the markets are instable and are easily affected by the market fluctuations, it increases 
uncertainty level for the investors. It also leads to lowering down of economic activities, affect living standard of the people and can ultimately impede economic development of the country. Every growing economy is characterized by dynamic market economy with certain degree of volatility leading to gradual structural changes. The biggest challenge for the policy makers of the economy is to maintain a balance between growth and volatility. That means without reducing or harming negatively the economy's ability to improve the living standard of people which occurs due to high level of production, they have to minimize the instability in there as well as the world economy. Undoubtedly, maintaining financial stability in the country is a national concern. But with the growing effects of globalization, it is a proven fact that now nations have become more interconnected. That's why global stability is a necessary situation for the growth if every economy and IMF plays a very important role in doing so. Thus, the elementary mission of IMF is to make sure that international monetary system stays stable and responds in a positive and a stable manner. For achieving this objective, IMF helps the member countries in their balance of payment difficulties and lend them to put their economies back on track. It also monitors the global economy as well as the economies of the member countries to foresee any crisis and take precautionary efforts and give away advisory functions too. To achieve this objective, the role of IMF falls into three areas. Every country that becomes the member of IMF accepts the obligation of scrutiny of their economic and financial policies at the international forum. The mandate of IMF clearly states its vision to oversee the international monetary system, for which it monitors, evaluates, scrutinizes the policies of 188 member countries. This process is called as surveillance. It takes place at global forum and at individual as well as regional levels. IMF helps to assess the domestic policies of the member countries. It evaluates that whether the policies of economies promote their own stability or not. It helps to assess risks which may be associated with the instability of domestic monetary market and may lead to adverse balance of payment situation. Thereby, it advises on required policy adjustments. It also helps in rendering solutions in the form of alternatives when the domestic stability could adversely affect the global stability. In its surveillance function, thus, IMF operates like a watchdog over the member nation's economic policies. In 2007, IMF revised its policies regarding surveillance and took a decision of bilateral surveillance, which would be focused on exchange rate and monetary strategies fiscal, financial strategies, as well as assessing of various risks and their vulnerabilities. This is an open process where all the members publish a public information notice regarding this, which ultimately helps in creating a transparent environment. IMF keeps a check on member economies by regularly consulting the member nations. Usually, Annual consultations are given where economic as well as financial developments are discussed with the policy makers. In most of the cases, 
private sector representation is always there in such consultations. Members from academia, trade unions, society, they are also made a part of it to get the holistic view of the prevalent conditions. The member nations are advised on financial, macroeconomic and balance of payment stability matters to promote economic stability. This surveillance service of IMF works on a very, very systematic basis to assess countries' vulnerability to crisis. It also runs a financial sector assessment program where the financial sector of a country is assessed and the policy framework is established for the country to respond to various risks and vulnerabilities. IFM closely monitors and keeps a watch on the global as well as regional trends also. It publishes periodic reports, namely World Economic Outlook, Fiscal Monitor and the Global Financial Stability Report, through which global, regional and macroeconomic developments are communicated to the countries after in-depth analysis. Sound economic policies are the core to the success of any economy. IMF considers this very fact and assists the member countries to develop, design and implement their sound economic policies which in turn strengthen their financial capacities. IMF provides training as well as advice in various core areas of the expertise listed below. Regulation and supervision of financial systems. Training programs in the field of statistics. Advice and training in the area of fiscal, monetary and exchange rate policies. Legal and related matters. Technical assistance is provided to the member nations daily at IMF. It provides them consultation and expertise on various matters pertaining to the implementation of fiscal and monetary policy, tariffs and trade policies etc. IMF has established a regional model for technical assistance and has created six technical regional centers. Seven training institutes have also been established for the training of member country officials. IMF has been providing financial support or assistance to the countries that experience economic crisis. Credits are provided to such countries and loans are arranged for them to manage their balance of payment deficits or another such financial crisis emerging out of sudden currency devaluations. In the era of 1990s, IMF started various financial assistance programs. For instance, in 1995, Mexico faced severe financial crisis due to devaluation of its currency. The Mexican government got $17.8 billion of financial assistance from IMF. Similarly, Russia received financial assistance several times in 1990. Similarly, in Asian crisis, countries like South Korea, Indonesia and Thailand received financial assistance from IMF. Whenever loan is demanded by a country, IMF provides them financial assistance to rebuild and stabilize their currency. It supports and provides advisory consultation for the economic growth of the economy. Various kinds of loans are provided to low-income or middle-income economies. 
these loans are regarded as poverty reduction and growth facility loans. These loans are low interest loans and help the economies to reduce poverty and solve issues pertaining to low growth rate. If some economies face shocks due to negative economic conditions prevalent in the economy, then they also can apply to IMF for financial assistance. These situations may arise due to unavoidable commodity price changes or natural calamities or disasters or even war-like situations. Such loans are known as exogenous shocks facility loans, ESF. IMF enters into standby arrangements with member countries. Whenever countries face balance of payment issues, they can apply for financial assistance from IMF to regain their financial stability. Economies that face long-term balance of payment issues and ultimately require economic reforms get extended fund facility assistance from IMF. Supplemental reserve facility is provided to the economies that require short-term financing on large scale. In the event of war or natural disasters, emergency assistance loans are also provided by IMF to the member nations. First is quotas. Member countries are assigned a quota which is based on the size of economy in the world relatively. It ultimately decides the maximum contribution towards the funds of IMF. As a common practice, when a country joins IMF, it pays one quarter of its quota in widely accepted foreign currencies, that is US dollar, euro, yen, or pound sterling on special drawing rights. The rest of three quarters of the quota can be paid in country's own currency. These quotas are reviewed once in five years. Gold Holdings IMF stands as largest official holders of gold in the world. However, the use of these gold limits is restricted for free use by the articles of IMF. IMF may sell or accept gold as payment by the member countries if it is approved by the 85% majority of total voting power. Third is IMF concessional lending and debt relief. IMF has started various special financial assistance schemes for low-income countries. IMF provides loans to low-income countries at low interest rates under Poverty Reduction and Growth Trust Scheme. Under its heavily indebted Poor Countries Initiative and the Catastrophic Containment and Relief Trust, these resources come from member contributions and it provides financial assistance to the poor countries for the debt relief. Lending Capacity of IMF For finance lending, IMF can use its quota holdings of financially strong economies. The executive board of IMF selects these currencies every three months. The holdings of these currencies along with SDR holdings 
make up the total usable resources of IMF. If required, IMF can borrow from other countries to supplement these. IMF has done two standing borrowing agreements also in regard to this that is the expanded new arrangement to borrow and the general arrangements to borrow. In the event of crisis, if quota arrangements may fall short to meet the need of member countries, IMF can use to borrow arrangements. The prime goal or objective of international monetary system is to give or contribute towards stable and high growth at the global level. It is done with fostering price and financial stability globally. The international monetary system comprises the set of various official arrangements that regulate key magnitude of the balance of payments. It comprises of four elements that is exchange arrangements and exchange rates. International payments and transfers relating to current international transactions. International capital movements and international reserves. Therefore, the essential objective or the goal of the international monetary system is to back smooth progress of exchange of goods and services and capital among countries. Thus, as a key player in the global monetary system, International fund, Monetary Fund has a very precise mandate to make sure the stability and effective operation of international monetary system. IMF has been reaching out to provide financial assistance as well as supervision to the member countries. Finance projects aimed at resolving issues pertaining to climate change and thereby directly obliquely ensuring mitigation of injustice and inequality in various socio-economic and political climes across the world. Before finishing the concept, let's summarize it. To be more precise, we can say that IMF serves a very useful and important role in the world economy. It plays a very pertinent and useful role through its various lending programs, surveillance and technical assistance provisions to the member countries. It plays a vital role in identifying the potential risks of the economy relating to economic instability and provides solutions, alternatives or guidance to solve such issues which can ultimately turn into the matters of the concern of the world economy. The best part of the working of IMF has been that it has always changed its role and the way of operations in ever-changing world according to the need of the world economy. Through its surveillance function, IMF watches keeps a check on the economies and their economic policies. Surveillance is done at two levels. One is country surveillance. Second is multilateral surveillance. In country surveillance, IMF team visits the country once in a year to assess and find out the prevalent economic conditions and policies in multilateral surveillance. It surveys global and regional trends. Through its World Economic Outlook and Global Financial Stability Report, it informs, points out, warns the issues or the problems of the world economy that can affect the global monetary system. IMF has played a crucial role in uplifting the development of low middle income economies 
around the world. It has supported them financially as well as technically to resolve the issues like poverty, unemployment, economic growth. Typically, it helps them through technical assistance also, provided in the form of trainings, workshops that can help them to take right measures to solve their economic issues and gaining financial stability. Thank you.